Welcome to another edition of Mississippi Stories. I'm your host, Marshall Ramsey, editor-at-large at Mississippi Today. You can check out more and past episodes at MississippiToday.org. Love our guest today. I've known her for a long time. Known her since the YM, I guess the YMCA YMC. days mm-hmm. back in the day. Yeah. But she is the... The. 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 <laughs> the sweet potato queen. She is... Uh, let's put it this way. A lot of times when you're a queen, you're a queen for a year. But she's queen for life. In yep. 40 years. 40, 40 years. Okay. You started when you were two. Yeah, yeah apparently, because I'm only 27. Yeah. But. Jill Connor Brown is with us today. Jill, thank you for joining me. That's just an honor to get to hang always, out with you. Always happy to be with you. Mark. Yeah, we've done like six interviews before we started this interview yeah. and talked about <laughs> all kinds of things. But thank you for joining us today. Mm-hmm. And like I said, you're coming up on your Super Bowl right now. Yep, we are. 40th year and. Raising money for Children's of Mississippi. You've is, raised a ton uh, of money over the years. It's, uh, and, and awareness. I mean, a lot of people yeah. are still are not aware that we have the only hospital in the state of Mississippi where any child can be treated regardless yeah. of ability to pay. And there, we have that brand new $200 million Sanderson Tower, which is fabulous. But we're just about to start renovating the Children's Cancer Clinic, which wow. I'm excited about. So. You know, I, I've done a lot of things yeah. for a lot of different causes, but sick babies yeah. <laughs> trumps whatever you got. It's kind of hard know. to say no to. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and yeah. it makes Easy a cause. big difference. And even when you had, mm-hmm. when you broke away for a few years and had your own parade, you raised like half a million dollars yeah, then too. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. so it's, it's always been for a great cause. And I would say, and I think, and I'm not being overblown here. This is probably one of the most important parades that we've had in Jackson, just because I think the combination of yes. the water crisis, the combination of the pandemic, I think it's just the chance to do something positive and have fun. Oh, I'm, I'm praying over our water because I've got, you know, all these women coming to the Hilton, which is yeah. in Jackson. Yeah. Um, but, you know, we'll take a spit bath if we have to. <laughs> but, no, I think it's all it's all working well. And, but, yes, it's 40 years. Vicky's making yeah. Um, it's 40 years, and a lot of people, you know, were afraid to come back last year. You know, yeah. it was the first year after COVID, and so they're coming back this year, and it's it's um, it's very moving uh, because it's people from all over the country, and they haven't seen each other in several years, and it's, you know, in 40 years of this together, we've we've been through a lot. Yeah. Um, you know, as as friends with them, I mean, we've. We've buried queens. We've buried our parents. We've buried sisters and brothers. Some of us have got to help us bury children and grandchildren. And it's, you know, we need to be together. Yeah. And, and I will say that the beauty of the Sweet Potato Queens has been that community that's been developed. And I don't know if you ever thought that would happen. <laughs> it was my five-year plan. Yeah, exactly. You know? <laughs> yeah, you're up in Vardaman going, just, hey, can I be your queen? I just and, wanted to yeah. entertain myself and still yeah. do. Yeah. But it is... Um, you know, it's you don't get too old to play. You get old when you quit playing, Good. and it, it's it's very spiritually important. Yeah. Uh, I believe in the dressing up funny and acting stupid, which and we do know it's stupid. Yeah, makes it possible to step outside yourself yeah. for a little while, become somebody else for a little while that doesn't have a worthless ex husband or a child in therapy or breast cancer, whatever it is that. Yeah you're dealing with and it makes you a little bit stronger spiritually to go back and tote that load when you have to. The load will be there when you go back. Yeah, we definitely (laughs) learned during the pandemic that we need people. Yes. And we need each other. Yep. And so, and so Malcolm is, uh, we just marvel at it that, you know, we're still standing and um, after 40 years, I can remember, because I'm 70 (laughs) this year and I think about it and I go, how long, oh Lord, how long? Um, and I remember in the early days working on the float, and one of my queens, Cynthia Spigens, just laughed and said, oh, we'll probably still be doing this when we're 40. You know, I said, 40, it was so old. And now we've been doing it for 40 years. And um, But when I think about how long, oh Lord, how long, I remember Aunt Faye, who I've told you about many times, from Midland, Texas, who started parading with us when she was 88 and blind. <laughs> and all of her family, all the women in her family brought her. And when she was 100, she was our Grand Marshal in Fondra, and she passed at 104. So, I mean, I mean, if I'm going to live up to Aunt Faye at all, I've got at least 30 more 30 years. 30 more years for a succession plan anyway. And, so. you know, 
I have been known to be a judgmental. No. God forgive me. Yeah. But, and I have passed judgment many times on Donna Douglas. Yeah. Um, <laughs> for continuing to be Ellie Mae Clampett yeah. until the day she died, which was, I don't know how old she was. And, and then, she still is. <laughs> and then, no, she's dead. No, I know. Um, Even yeah. if she's dead. <laughs> well, yeah. she's but, you know, with the hair and yeah. the outfit and everything. And then, you know, I was looking in the mirror one day <laughs> and thought, hmm, Miss Pot, <laughs> calling them kettles black. Because, I mean, I'm 70 and I'm about to put on a green outfit. Yeah, but you, you've sequence. got props. I do have props. And I'm still, you know, so Donna Douglas, I beg your forgiveness. And um, I think she, she was you. right. She <laughs> was right. So, yeah, I'm headed from here to go to... Uh, children's yeah. to uh, help Jan Michaels and the radio folks do. And Jan's but one of the best people in the world, so that's why you is. do have props. She is. And so we're doing the radio fund to raise money for children. So I have, I have to put on sequin stuff for the children. So this is one of my coats that I love this because I sound like a rain stick when I wear it. See, that works for radio almost better than the sound works really well for radio. Yeah. yeah. So, um, and. And I have crowns because mm -hmm. the children are going to want to see sparkling. I mean, things. the Queen of England has nothing on you when it comes oh, to crowns. Well, except her stuff is real. Well, then yeah, there's, so. there's that. Now, this is my small crown that I use when I'm speaking different places because it's time and it, it fits easily and it's comfortable. And I was, you know, wearing it all around, prancing around, being so cute. Mm -hmm. And I was speaking. I think I was in Brookhaven. And I, I was in the ladies' room, you know, putting the queen on. And I happened to look. It says sweet potato queen on, on the crown. And I happened to look. There is an E on potato. Oh, <laughs> and right. I just went, oh, my God. I'm from Mississippi. Here prancing around. Stand. I got an E on potato. And I called the guy in New York that makes my crowns. And I said, Larry, you're putting E on here. And he said, oh, dear, send it back to me. I said, no, I've already worked it into my deal. But, you know, God will keep us humble. I thought Dan Quayle might have been. Yeah, and he might. Oh, an E. Hold that. But That's now, quite this, this is the one that will be raffled this year. Every year, I, yeah. Larry Gerba in New York makes all the jewelry for the Metropolitan Opera, all the Broadway shows, everything. He makes my crowns. Now, this is, again, not as big as my big crowns, because uh, I'm certainly not going to give one to somebody else that's bigger than mine. But this one will be raffled this year at, at our Sweet Potato Queen events at the Hilton. And my rule is, mm -hmm. and all the money does go to children, so Mississippi, the rule is you have to be in the room, don't go pee when it's crown time, and you have to be in the room and you have to be wildly enthusiastic. You know, there's nothing worse than an absent winner unless it's a boring winner. Yeah. You know, so we want to see cartwheels and stuff if you win. And uh, so somebody will win this one this year. Oh, and oh, you have, this you is have. my hair, my travel hair. <laughs> you know, we have to have big hair for all this because one thing, it makes your butt look smaller. Um, and so we've always had these clip-on ponytails when we're not going to wear the red wigs because it kind of balances the crown. Well, I'm old, and so I was, but I'm not salt and pepper. I don't have black hair. And so I went to the hair store where all the little 12-year-old girls work, and all they have is salt and pepper hair, and I show them my travel hair, and they're going, Honey, where'd you get that? <laughs> so it's not very, it looks like a dead animal. But one of the little girls did help me. She helped me find the right color gray, and I actually had to weave it in myself because it had gotten to where when I put it on, my head looked like saddle oxfords because this was white and this was all brown. <laughs> so I had to make my head more realistic. But there's a lot involved in being yeah. clean, you know? It just. This is the 40th, so you saw our sunglasses that we had there, our official sunglasses. But since it's the 40th year and I am the boss queen, I have these for myself <laughs> <laughs> for this year. <laughs> started with four people. I mean, you're, there four started people. with four who girls. Are the, who were the first four? Uh, Vivian Neal. She was mm -hmm. Vivian White then, married to Malcolm. Here, I'll put that back. Okay. And, um, uh, Mona Shumake, mm -hmm. uh, who's gone to Florida, and uh, Sherry Anglin, uh, and that was the, and me, yeah. and that was us, and we rode in the back of a, a green pickup truck that uh, Sherry had bothered for, borrowed from her dad. It said Anglin Sweet Potato Farms, and uh, which he had a farm in Bardman, at, well, 
I say farm. He actually had a garden <laughs> in the garden. But, but the, it was very uh, lofty um, ambitions to say farms uh, on the truck. And we, we rode and we wore, I wore my sister's 1964 prom dress. And we had dresses from the Goodwill, wherever, and little teeny tiny tiaras. And I think we got it Hancock fabrics, maybe. And um, we rode in the back of the pickup truck and smiled and waved and threw sweet potatoes. And, oh my God, sweet but potatoes. But we just acted like, you know, How many we people were, did you kill? <laughs> was, well, and Sherry was like a world champion softball player. She almost broke a window in yeah. the IRS building. So we kind of <laughs> had to rein her in. What could go wrong? She had an that? arm. Yeah. Sherry had an arm. You know, the rest of us were just kind of, you know, lobbing. Yeah. I don't know who she was aiming at. <laughs> well, thank goodness Vardaman was like the sweet potato, not the kale capital or something right. like that. Well, it probably wouldn't yeah. have quite the same I ring. just thought sweet potato, you know, it queens sounds sounded funny and still do. And uh, it's, so now there are about 6,500 and something chapters in 37 countries. Wow. Now, so to go from four <laughs> people throwing sweet potatoes in, in a parade that probably didn't have any traffic uh, Nobody knew we were doing parade. it. Rush, you were in the it middle of rush hour. Rush hour traffic yeah. on a Wednesday or Thursday. It was actually on St. Patrick's Day, and we went from from CS's yeah. uh, through downtown Jackson to and ended up at George Street Grocery. And, wow. uh, yeah. And no way it was. You know, people were just trying to get home, and we're just. <laughs> and now it's, that was it. I, you know, I was hooked for life. <laughs> How did it go from four people throwing sweet potatoes in the middle of rush hour traffic to being a worldwide phenomenon? Was it when when you got the books? The, it grew every year, yeah. you know, organically. But the first book came out in '99. Organic sweet and, potatoes. Yes. yes. <laughs> and, um, the uh, and it came out in January, so we did see an uptick in uh, in March yeah. of '99, and. But I remember looking out in the crowd and seeing somebody holding a sign saying, North Dakota loves the sweet potato queens. And wow. we just went, wow. Somebody took time off work and bought a plane ticket from North Dakota. <laughs> they have an airport in North Dakota. <laughs> and came to Jackson, Mississippi, you know, for this. And so then in 2000, it just blew completely up. Yeah. Yeah. So it's been, it's been a great thing. Are you at nine or ten books now? Ten books. Ten books, because well, the, the cookbook is yeah, now the tenth one is yeah, the tenth one is just a collection of all the recipes that are in the first nine books. Yeah. Plus thirty three new ones, and it's there's not it's just recipes. There are no funny stories. It's just like here's something good to eat. You know, which <laughs> here's is, how you make it. Which is yeah. important. Yeah, and yeah, so you can, you know it's on Kindle or which is good for the grocery store and yep. then cookbook in the kitchen and and we have the musical. Yeah, the music. Yeah. Tell us about that because I mean. You really got to hook up with some incredibly talented people. It, it was, well, the first thing, you know, my book, the whole book thing started with Roy Blunt Jr. just called me out of the blue. Really? And said he was publishing an anthology of Southern humor and would like to use some of my work. And it's, <laughs> so, I'm like, okay. That, and I mean, that. Yeah. And I, next weekend, I'm going to participate in the New Orleans Book Festival on a panel with Roy Blunt because it has been 30 years yeah. since he put me in that book and so I will get the chance to thank say, him say thank you, thank for you, my thank career, you. literally. Yeah. And uh, because that led to me being on the What Do You Know show, that led to me meeting Willie Morris and his wife Joanne Pritchard yeah. Morris and Joanne uh, got my book deal, uh, the first book deal. And you were right, just Random a local House. column. Yeah. Wrote for Malcolm's paper, yeah. the Diddy Wah Diddy, he yeah. and Paul Kinzenary started. And that's where Roy Blunt found me. and. Um, and so it, my whole career has been a total God thing. I have no ambition whatsoever. Seriously, I never saw it. I, I just want to keep the lights on, the tuition paid. Yeah. And, um, and it, it has come to me through just bizarre circumstances like Roy Blunt calling up. And then a little while after that, Melissa Manchester called. <laughs> because that, I guess it was in 2000 or 2001, we were on the front page of the Mobile Register, Dallas Morning News, and the LA Times. And there was a front page column about the parade. Uh, there was not a picture on the front page of the LA Times, but the column was, and Melissa read that. And her process is when you know she hears music, and she was reading about us, and she said, that's a musical. And so she contacted, um, she found somebody who, who knew how to reach me. Uh, 
I have lost Sam's name. Pascal? Yes, thank yeah. you, God. Yeah. Um, yeah, edit that, please. <laughs> no, I mean, that's she the calls, first time that's ever yeah, happened, ever, ever that I could yeah. remember something, um, so we're doing great. She called Sam Haskell, who was, you know, head of worldwide television at uh, William Morris, and because we were doing a, a sitcom with the WB with Delta Burke, and so Melissa called Sam and found out how to reach me and just called me up and said, you know, I would, how would you feel about a musical being based on the sweet? And it's always been my dream for it. Yeah. Um, I, I love a musical, and um, more than anything, I didn't care about the TV thing. I was glad that didn't work out because it was horrible, but the musical. So Melissa wrote the music, Sharon Vaughn wrote the lyrics. Sharon's first number one song was My Heroes Have Always Been Cowboys. She's the most prolific songwriter that you don't know who she is. Yeah. I mean, she's half of every song you've ever liked, Sharon wrote it. <laughs> and, um, um, and Rupert Holmes wrote oh, the yeah. book. And, um, Rupert, I mean, a lot of people know him from the Pina Colada song, <laughs> which is actually called Escape. Escape, Which yeah. I, I, something I learned at age 55. Uh -huh. It's like, yeah. oh, okay, I always thought it was a Pina, Pina Colada, Colada song. song. But he is one of the most prolific oh, writers. I mean, beyond know, description. Even adapted Time to Kill, thankfully mm -hmm. not into a musical. That yeah. would have been awkward. But, yeah. Um, yeah, he's just, he is so good. And so charming. Yeah. And so he has a new book out about how to kill your employer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I'm, you know, excited about the musical. It's really a, a, a fun, happy show. How could it be otherwise? And, you know, it, COVID has, you know, put a hitch in that because the way theaters, live theaters, book their properties, you yeah. know, their seasons a year or two in advance. Oh, and so yeah. it's the same thing happened with movies. Yeah. Um, you know, you, a friend of mine that makes movies, that, you know, he's ready to make a movie, but everybody has got two or three contracts they got to fulfill because yeah. nothing could get made during COVID. So we're waiting for Sweet Shade Queens to take off in theaters around the country, but we need it more than ever because it's so happy. It's yeah. such a happy. Yeah, I was going to say right now, you know, like I said, it seems like everybody's yelling at each other on social media. You know, people are fussy on the news, whatever. This is a time when we truly need humor. Well, we just did it. Um, Last year in uh, in, uh, in the summer in, in West Wigo, outside of, of New Orleans, and the great thing was um, the the girl that was cast as me and yeah. um, grew up in my church, singing. Oh, wow. has the most incredible voice you ever heard, and she's black. And nice. so it was right around yeah. the, the time of the Little Mermaid yeah. controversy. Oh, and I'm yeah. going, okay, get over yourself. This is first of all a cartoon right. of a non-existent. <laughs> Exactly. mythical creature <laughs> what color and I said I am thrilled beyond words that Crystal Jim is playing me yeah. in this musical because for once in my life I will be able to sing like an angel <laughs> and, uh, so uh, she was she was fantastic I can get chills thinking about her singing uh, she's, and you're like at the end of the day I'm the one that, that has to worry about it and I'm thrilled I'm thrilled I'm thrilled I'm thrilled so it, it was great. Well, Jill, I could, literally could talk to you for like six months. I always love talking to you. And I would tell everybody, the thing about Jill is Jill will be sitting there and something, I'll write something on Facebook and Jill can read through it and see that I need a pep talk, right? And I'll get a message from her that gives me some encouragement. She's, you're very good yeah. about that. And I just wanted okay. to say thank you that um, you've you've given me a gift over the years and I'm just so glad that you're my friend. And, just a beggar trying to show another beggar where I found bread. Yeah, well, thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, go ahead and let folks know how they can obviously find out more about Sweet Potato Queens and about Sweet you. Sweet .com, and I'm all over Facebook, either as a friend or Jill Connor Brown author or the official page of the world famous Sweet Potato Queens. Jill, this has been great. I think my actual phone number is on the website. Yeah, give her a call. Easy to find. She, she wants to hear from you. If you can't find me, you ain't looking. You ain't looking hard. And also, too, she's got a really cool van. That's yeah, you can see me coming from space. Yeah, pretty much. Thank you. Well, I tell you what, hey, thanks for watching. Like I said, you can go to MississippiToday.org and find past episodes. What's One up? thing we have to oh, say. We have to say. Well, this okay. is important. <laughs> this is yeah. that right now we are in the middle of the Patty Peck Honda Do Da Day yes. new car giveaway, and 100% mm -hmm. of the money does go to Children's Hospital. You can go to friendsofchildrens.org yes. and get a ticket. And so they're drawing. We draw 10 keys uh, out in front of the parade. Um, 
time. And so on Friday, the 24th, before the parade, uh, the day before the parade at Hallam House at 5.30, the 10 key winners will try their keys on the treasure box and someone will win a brand new car. And all of the money does go this year to the renovation project at Children's Cancer Clinic. So get your, your um, tickets. That's fantastic. And cars are expensive now, so it's a They're, bargain. And Hondas, you can drive forever, as and we ever, know. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. And once again, thanks again for watching MississippiToday.org. You can see some past episodes, and we'll see you next time. Thank you for watching this episode of Mississippi Stories. Make sure to subscribe to the Mississippi Today YouTube channel and click the bell to be notified every time a new video uploads.